Welcome to the Nutramedical Report for a very uh, historic day. This day, the 12th of April uh, 2010, will be written down in history as a day when the great aha, the great oh my gosh, uh, was said, when a theory was presented that was based on science, and it needs to be challenged, it needs to be ripped apart, it needs to be attacked, because if this theory based on science is correct, it explains a number of biblical, historical, geological, and other things, galactic and solar events, that are about to happen to planet Earth that the globalists are fully aware of, or at least have a great deal of the evidence, and which is why they're planning uh, underground bases, etc., why they are purposely crashing the world economy and collecting wealth, and why a number of things like Obamacare, cap and trade, which was passed in 2006 in California, uh, and the Senate is now reviewing the House bill last year about to put it on the President's desk. I call him the teleprompter-in-chief, the usurper-in-chief, uh, by this summer, which means 2011, they will be implementing it across the United States. In 2010, the end of this year, less than 10 months, we will be uh, undergoing the licensure of your home. And, of course, Polly Higgins, a uh, barrister in Britain, is working diligently with the United Nations to put a fifth leg of what's called crimes against humanity, now a new type of crime called ecocide, and in fact will uh, allow them to extradite and try in the International Court of Justice in The Hague any individual on the planet that's guilty of ecocide. And this will tie in with the cap and trade, the now the quote, heresy of not believing that carbon dioxide is a death gas from the ninth ring of Hades. And when you hear this theory, I'm going to just present pieces of evidence first, and then the full presentation will be at ConspiracyCon 2010. You don't want to miss it, because what I'm going to present will be earth-shattering, literally. This is going to uh, shock the people of planet Earth into a state of reality. No longer theories. This is more serious by a thousand times than the incidents of the nuclear demolitions of 9-11 or even the comments by the abominator that Al-Qaeda is going to use a nuke against U.S. cities. Of course, that crime, saying these kind of statements, does not serve any purpose to protect the public. It literally is to drive fear into the stake, the heart of the public, so they can manipulate controls even more. Besides the trillions of money stolen, they're also now going to steal our future from us, and that's what they're attempting to do. And by releasing the truth today, we can start preparing for what's coming to our planet and why they're in such a, uh, literally, a race naked to the finish line to do what they're doing. Well, one of the first pieces of evidence, and I'm a skeptic skeptic, which is, you know, a good scientist has several personality characteristics, and I try to be a good scientist. Number one, you got to be honest. If you've got something that's an anomaly, you can't throw it over your left shoulder. Number two, you've got to collect all the anomalies. You've got to collect all the good scientists from the previous people because we, as scientists, stand on the, on the shoulders of other people who have connect, collected anomalies, uh, created theories and hypotheses, and put them together to explain a lot. And one of those great scientists that needs to get a lot more credit is Robert Felix, who's on today. Welcome to the program, Robert. Thanks, Dr. Bell. I enjoy and being on with you. You're... Two books, and I'm going to tell people this, you must get these two books. Uh, the, uh, your two books are Ice Age Now. Well, actually, and, it's, uh, that's the name of my website is yeah. IceAgeNow.com. Yeah. But the book itself is not by fire, but by ice. Yeah, I love that. It's, it's even a better title. Uh, <laughs> not by fire. In other words, we're, we're not just uh, going to see a uh, collapse of civilization by, by fire, you know, like firestorms or nuclear war, no. but by ice. And then the second book is called? Magnetic Reversals and Evolutionary Leaps. That's now, all one name. You know, I want to kind of reserve some of the things that we've talked about in a number of programs because I've gone over your data, the research data from Larry Joseph, the research data from NASA, uh, other scientists I've been collecting over the years, and I'm a skeptic skeptic. I've got information going back about the approaching dwarf star nemesis, going back with NASA data over 25-plus years, and I finally had one of those big aha moments where I put your data together with all the others that came up with what I call a, a collective overall theory that needs to be challenged because if this theory is correct, uh, we're in more trouble than we can imagine. And, of course, the globalists understand this, 
And that's why we're seeing the global events, the geophysical, geopolitical, and financial events occurring uh, in the specific sequence they are right now. And I'm a skeptic, skeptic, too, and I, as of this moment, uh, up until this moment, have not believed in this nem- nemesis star, so I think yeah. this will be interesting. Yeah, and I need to be a skeptic. <laughs> but as I go into this, I'm not agreeing, but we'll see what happens. Well, that's, that's okay. Uh, that's okay, and I want people to not agree, but I want them to kind of consider the data that I've collected. And it was only in the last six months that I've collected enough data to say there's something going on here. And I'll, I'll tell you what the, the final backbreaker was, the data from the Chandra X-ray satellite uh, that I got last year. Uh, but here's the first bit. The first bit was actually in reference to Stan Dale. Stan is a bright man. He actually calculated out using U.S. naval satellite data and infrared satellite data, using the ocean temperatures, he could calculate where the tectonic plates were under the ocean and would calculate out the likelihood of a major earthquake based on the plasma discharge from the Earth because the telluric uh, electrical currents inside the Earth uh, discharge as plasma fields through the oceans and change the ocean temperature. And when the ocean temperature on either side of a tectonic plate is more than a certain number of degrees, uh, from satellite data, there's an increased risk of a major earthquake. And if you, of course, extend those fault lines toward the Earth, it doesn't. it's not a sea quake, it's an earthquake. You know, and that that would certainly go along with what I say because I've been saying that that uh, volcanic activity and earthquake activity increase with uh, with magnetic reversals because I think they're driven by uh, I think both uh, tectonic activity and earthquake activity are driven by electromagnetic forces. Right. So in other words, we're living in a plasma universe. If you take uh, Doctor. Uh, Dr. McKenney, who I think is another brilliant mind, has worked out uh, issues on the electric universe. Now, so if you go and Google electric universe, you'll find all kinds of research by Dr. McKenney, uh, Professor McKenney, uh, and, and others that have shown very clearly that there's been discharges between planets. For example, ancient Greeks reported about plasma discharges that occurred uh, that resulted in worms crawling out of the ground. And before an earthquake, worms or frogs or snakes can crawl out of the ground. Before the Szechuan earthquake, there's a major problem with the snakes crawling out of the ground and literally freezing because it was wintertime in yes. Szechuan, China. And they froze to death, so it wasn't really a smart thing for the snakes to come out of the ground. Uh, and the same with frogs, literally jumping across the road. Millions of frogs coming out of their little frog lairs uh, where it was smart to stay in the ground, but the telluric electricity that was uncomfortable down there, so the frogs jumped out and, got, and ran across the highway and became, you know, flat frogs from being run over, uh, et cetera. So, yes. So oh, yeah. I, I have actually, I have one chapter in my book, in, in not by fire but by ice, called "Earthquake Lights and Crazy Snakes." Right, and, and that's and, and that's yeah, really it was, good. It was, I mean, it was in February. It was the middle of the winter, and the, <laughs> the snakes crawled out of the ground, and and then they had a huge earthquake that killed something like uh, six hundred, seven hundred thousand people. It now, was uh, huge. In, we've had a lot of earthquakes since January. We're having more earthquakes per month of seven plus than any other time in history, in modern recordable history. Okay. Yes. And those earthquakes are increasing and increasingly frequent. In fact, the latest one that we suffered from was Sunday before last, was a big, big damned earthquake. And it was a 7.2 at least down in the Baja, and mm-hmm. we're 200 miles away, and it shook the heck out of us. I thought it was a train going through the center of our house, and it was loud. I mean, people don't tell you that earthquakes are loud, but this thing. You could feel the vibrations through your body, but it also was loud subsonic sounds. It was a sound almost like, and you could the ground felt like you're, instead of concrete pad, it felt like you're on jello, mm-hmm. okay? And we're a couple hundred miles away. In Calexico and Mexicali, they had $100 million damage, and it damaged uh, all the way out to the um, Imperial Valley, which is the... the single largest producer of food crops in the United States and probably one of the top in the world. A few years ago, there was an earthquake in Seattle, and I happened to be there at the time. And I was in a concrete, one-story concrete building and ran outside to the parking lot. And the the parking lot was waving up and down. Yeah. And cars were 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 waving up and down. It looked like they were going to be hitting each other. Yeah, like it was on a rubber. It was, it was like the concrete had become rubber, right? Yes. Yeah. We're going to continue. I'm going to see if you put each piece of this puzzle. And when you see the whole thing, and I want it challenged because if what we've come together today, what the aha moment, it's very significant. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> 